Hello, everybody. This is Tahira Monique Brown with another Tahira's Tahiraisms. I may be posting a little bit early this week because I was blessed this past Saturday. On March the 1st, I was given an award for a woman of courage, an Eagle Award by Ladies of Royalties with Yakinia Marie Duff at her event for Empowering Women. It was amazing. The whole event, the messages that they were giving were just absolutely amazing. But I remember the speech that I gave. You know, I remember when she first asked me and uh, to give me a medal or an award. I want to honor you, she said. And you know, it was, it was hard for me to just say, okay, you can do that because I really know that when someone says they want to honor you, you got to be ready, not only for them, but for whatever God has on your life. So I remembered a speech that I wrote for the Freedom Sisters celebrating extraordinary African-American women. And the name of my speech at the time for the Civil Rights Institute was called Faithful Faith. So I began my speech by telling them the meaning of faith. It is the belief and trust in God, complete trust. As with trust, faith involves a concept of future events or outcomes. And it is used conversely for belief, not resting in logical proof or material evidence. You see, as children, we are constantly told to have faith in what we are being taught and what that teaching will mean in different stages of our lives journey. We look innocently at the world with wide-eyed curiosity and we take chances with the delicate balance between life and death. And that's why receiving this courageous award meant something to me because I'm looking back over all of my journey and all the things I've been through in my life. And for someone to say to me, I want to honor you, I felt very humbled by that. And she kept after me until I finally said, I'm going to clear my schedule and I'm going to make myself available for you. You see, our loving parents and teachers show us what life is all about. They rush to our aid and chastise us for not doing what is right. We are to live life humbly, honest, and strong so that in our old age we can be a living testimony and we can be wise women who know what life has in store no matter what time period it is. There are strong women who walk among us today and they are going through difficult circumstances. You see them every day. They may appear weak or too humble for some to judge her, but a strong woman is like a diamond in the rough. No matter how much you place her in the muddy soil, when she is washed off, she shines as if she never endured a great hardship. She learns from the experience and passes the lessons on to the next generation. I've looked at women who have been deemed martyrs for the causes they fought for, and I have watched them glide into a room with their heads up high, with a quiet and powerful voice and powerful strength that defines the essence of their long and treacherous journeys. What I mean is for those that could not physically walk in the room, they walked in the room through the voice of someone who heard them, who believed in them, who relished the vision, who continued to carry the vision on from generation to generation. And if we hear those voices, we see those martyrs walk into that room. This stance says I am a survivor of justice and I am girded up for the battlefield. My shield of determination is in the strap attached to my breastplate of courage. It has weight on the garments that I wear. The walk says I have medals of honor awarded as a result of courage and valor. The medals are displayed on my breast shield that symbolizes the battles I've already fought and won. The fabric on my journey's darkest hours cascade around the scars that formed on my body from a, from a darkness, from a darkness, from a darkness that only the light of faith can enter in. Now I tell you the meaning of faithful. 
keeping faith, maintaining allegiance, constant, marked by a strong sense of duty or responsibility, are hearing firmly and devotedly as to a person, cause, or idea. Now I will tell you a brief tidbit of my story. This is the poem I wrote before I had to make a decision that almost ended my life. Please help me somebody. Can you not see me out here? Can you not see my tears falling? I am crying in the wilderness, bitter, stinging, ringing pains, cluttering the clauses of my soul. How do I stop the pain, the pain, the pain? I stood there and I told those women that I stand before you today to tell you about the battlefield that I had to fight on. My children and I were held hostage for two years, held captive by a stranger who plotted to take over our lives before I even knew of his existence. He stalked me for months, but one day he placed himself in my line of sight and he saw the fear in my eyes. Something about him made me tremble in fear. I backed away, hoping that I would not see him again. Three days later, he made his move to take me and everything normal about my life changed. I said everything changed. I lived in fear. I lived in terror as he took over my home and threatened the lives of my children. All of us on a daily basis. Now when I say I lived in fear and lived in terror, I didn't live in fear and terror in my spirit. I lived in fear and terror of losing my children. I lived in fear and terror of losing everything that meant something to me that I had no control over. But I had faith. And I would pray under my breath, Lord, one day I know you will set us free. I was not allowed to pray. That's just how strongly my faith showed through. I was not allowed to bathe myself. I was not allowed to feed myself unless a plate of food was tossed to me in a darkened room. I had to ask permission even to use the restroom. Every aspect of my life was controlled, but I had faith. He infiltrated the churches pretending to be a pastor and sat in their pulpits. He said he was with the CIA, a police officer, a musician, a television producer, and many other things. But I had faith that one day I would be free. And when that day came, when I had to make a choice on how I was going to save my children, that day I said a prayer of faith, and I knew I needed to be faithful to receive the blessing. If you are not familiar with the Shroud of Turin, it is a burial cloth, believed to be the cloth that Jesus Christ was shrouded in. And I had a photo of that hanging over my bedroom wall. And I wrote a prayer, and it's in my book called Man in the Picture. I wrote, man in the picture, if you are Jesus, I cannot even imagine your great suffering and pain. And no, I did not walk the road of Golgotha or feel the brutality of the whip across my back. And no, I did not carry the heavy cross on my shoulders, feeling the splinters tearing into my flesh. No, I did not feel the agony that you endured when they placed you on the cross. No, I did not feel the excruciating pain you must have felt as the soldiers drew back their heavy hammers and pounded the nails, driving them into your flesh. And as the blood spilled from your body and poured into the ground, they laughed at you on the cross and placed you so that every eye could see. And as the sun seared your flesh, they drove a spear into your side and ridiculed you. No, I did not see you as you endured this great pain for me. But God, I do know great pain. Yes, deep within my heart and deep within myself, I can feel the splinters of the cross tearing into my tormented soul and my tortured soul is screaming, please set us free. Amen. Fearing for the safety of my children, I had to pray and prepare myself for what might occur. I said, please God, do not let me die without knowing that my children are finally safe. I almost lost my life to save my children. And God sent angels down to save me in the hearts of doctors, detectives, police officers, lawyers, and family. 
Because I had faith and I was faithful to that belief, I sit here with you today in front of this microphone telling you this story because I've got an award that says I have an award for courage. Because of what I had to do to save my children, I ended up in a coma. And today I live with amnesia. I call it the get lost gas syndrome. It's, it's, you know, I don't let amnesia take control of me. But I'm here in all of my broken pieces put back together by the hands of God, I am convinced today that if any of you, should the events of this earthly life propel you into an encounter with fear, doubt, hopelessness, or uncertainty, would just take a few moments to clothe yourself in a robe of calmness, serious thoughtfulness, in faith, clothe yourself in hope and divine leadership, you will personally learn and know for a fact that God's eye is on the sparrow and he watches over you. Finally, may I say to each of you that God's words as recorded in Hebrews chapters 11 and 12 assures every believer that God is always available to the faithful in times when situations and danger will not allow them to see and understand their present and future well-being. God's words gives us the assurance and hope that one should never, ever allow any other thing to lead and guide them but his word. Put your faith in God's faithfulness or God's faithful hands. My faith turned to God's faithfulness. He was faithful. He set us free. The poem I'm about to share with you demonstrate how I always had a song humming in the corner of my mind, even in the darkest days as a hostage. Although there were no chains to just guns and knives, my spirit was chained up and bound until I could be set free. The name of the poem in my book is called I Sing in Spite of the Chains Because... I am. I sing in spite of the chains. I sing to the blue skies as the trees whisk the breezes. As a tune of grace brushes the seas. I sing to the infinite elements to reach out above eternity to say, Lord, I love you. And because I know you see, and one day you will set me free. I sing in spite of the chains. I sing to the melody of the harps that the angels play as they salute the coming of the Lord. I maintain a hope. I maintain a peace. I know his name is Jesus. I know his voice. And I know he will set me free. And he is as free as the wind. I sing in spite of the chains. I sing until the melody tortures the soul. I sing until it sears the light of day to bring hope of a well-lit way. I sing until the tears of joy fall from the clouds above. I sing to the ears of tune that the angels play day and night. And I will sing until the hands of children releases the dove of peace. Until then, I will sing, sing, sing. Y'all know that I am Tahira Monique Brown. And I believe in miracles.